encouraged fault lines of, of, of racial differences and, and re religious differences and political differences and realize that this is not a, a control system that wants to control Jewish people or Muslim people or middle-class Americans. It wants to control all of us. And so um, if we allow ourselves to be divided and ruled, uh, across the lines of race and religion and income bracket and all the rest of it, uh, then um, the power of the many is diluted to give power to the few. Uh, we have to come together and, real, and, and, and come together in, in an even more um, deep way by understanding that we're not actually coming together. We are each other. If, if you go beyond the illusory uh, apartness of this reality, and you go into the higher realms of consciousness, ev eventually you realize that we are just one infinite awareness. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this infinite awareness has different points of observation, different points of attention at any point, and those points of attention we perceive as individuality, um, and it can express itself that way. I mean, you know, people think that when you're talking about one infinite consciousness, that it's like everyone has to be the same. Quite the opposite. When everyone's the same, they are insulting the very idea of infinite consciousness because infinite consciousness is infinite possibility. That's what it is. Mm. It's infinite love. It's infinite possibility. It's infinite knowing. Um, and therefore, to celebrate your uniqueness of point of attention, to celebrate, celebrate your uniqueness of perception uh, at any point, is to celebrate the, the fact that we're all one consciousness. That one consciousness is not one uniform blob. It is all possibility, all existence, all happening together. It's the nothing and the everything. It's the everywhere and the nowhere, which is what, what happens in all possibility. Well, does that then lead into the really the, the work that you did begin 20 years ago with the idea that the forces against us, call them evil or whatever, then are not really... But are they soul as well? Are they one of? Are they part of us? If they, if they would be, they wouldn't try to hurt us, would they? Well, again, it, we come back, um, <laughs> Patrick, to what I said about point of observation. <laughs> you know, um, not every point of observation is uh, fr from a point of understanding uh, the nature of, we're, of uh, the un unity of, of, of everything. So they're just confused. Um, they're, well, yeah, they're disconnected. Disconnected. Um, you know, if you if you um, are sitting in a house and the windows are closed, then you you have a, a sense of limitation and perspective that is uh, confined to to that house, and therefore you're going to see the world and yourself in certain very limited terms, and you you you, you might you know not get on with other people in the house. And you might even want to control them mm -hmm. because of your limited sense of perception and self. Mm -hmm. But then someone opens the windows and you realize the house is in a street and the street's in a, in a town and mm -hmm. the town's in a country, the country's on a planet and the planet's in a mm -hmm. solar system and, and, and so it goes on. You then realize that actually uh, everything is one. Your, your, your perspective completely changes. So what we're looking at is uh, entities in a very small box of perception who have lost touch with understanding their true self uh, and therefore they are acting in incredibly imbalanced ways yeah. and you know these people it's not an accident these entities feed us uh, like a hive mind from I would say the moon um, and mm -hmm. but there's a lot more to know about that because Saturn comes into this big time is there's, there's a reason Saturn has so many moons for instance and we're gonna see that as we go along anyway um, the um, the hive mind that we pick up, as I was talking about earlier, is, is anxiety. It's fear. It's 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 ill at ease. Mm -hmm. Now this is this is this is because the base state of this en these entities is fear and insecurity. All these um, uh, kind of references to the, the these entities, they they have many many common themes, and one of them is that they are terrified of um, exposure because there are so few of them compared with uh, the human population. It's one of the reasons they want a massive cult. Um, and they are completely dependent in these uh, interstellar moons on the target planet for resources and everything. You know, if, if, they, if they cease to be able to trawl the Earth 
uh, for their resources that they need, then that's it. So they're desperate not to be exposed, and they have this, this fear. And I, I t I'll tell you this, um, uh, Patrick, when, when I put this together, um, I came across um, quotes from this uh, shaman source, Don Juan Matus, of um, Carlos Castaneda and his books in the yeah. 60s and so on. And I, 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 I read some of the quotes, and there are some people that say that Don Juan Matus, the Central American shaman source, didn't exist, but really, um, if he didn't exist, then the, the, whatever, the, the words that Castaneda put into his mouth are stunningly, stunningly accurate, <laughs> given what I've come to. <laughs> I just want to read you this um, a quote on the basis of what we've discussed in this program. Don Juan Matos said, We have a predator that came from the depths of the cosmos and took over the rule of our lives. Human beings are its prisoners. The predator is our lord and master. It is rendered as docile, helpless. If we want to protest, it suppresses our protest. If we want to act independently, it demands that we don't do so. Indeed, we are held prisoner. They took us over because we are food to them, and they squeeze us mercilessly uh, because we are their sustenance. Just as we rear chickens in coops, the predators rear us in human coops, human eros. Therefore, their food is always available to them. Think for a moment and tell me how you would explain the contradictions between the intelligence of man the engineer and the stupidity of his systems of belief, mm. or the stupidity of his contradictory behavior. Sorcerers believe that the predators have given us our systems of beliefs, our ideas of good and evil, our social mores. They are the ones who set up our dreams of success or failure. They have given us covetedness, greed and cowardice. It is the predator who makes us complacent, routinary and egomanical. In order to keep us obedient and meek and weak, the predators engage themselves in a stupendous maneuver, stupendous of course from the point of view of a fighting strategist, a horrendous maneuver from the point of view of those who suffer it. They gave us their mind. Hmm. Their predator, the predator's mind is baroque, contradictory, morose, filled with the fear of being discovered any minute now. And they gave us their mind, I absolutely agree with him, and they gave us their mind, I would suggest, through this moon matrix. Hmm. This thing I say in my, my talks and in uh, in my book, what you fight, you become, mm -hmm. and you can see that all the time. Yeah. Where you'll have a, a violent revolution to overcome a violent uh, uh, regime, and then the violent revolution produces another violent regime. <laughs> right. Be because, it, as Einstein said, you cannot change um, uh, problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. And mm -hmm. this is why we need an expansion of consciousness, another point of awareness. The, the point of awareness of our connection, or uh, infinite connection, and then we'll see each other and therefore the world in a very uh, different way. But no, absolutely, it, it, the biggest loser, the biggest loser when someone falls into the trap of hate is the hater. Because it, it, it eats them away, emotionally, vibrationally, it eats them away. Yeah. And, 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 and what does it do? It's like, you know, you, you have, um, a protest uh, in Greece at the banks and three bank employers get killed. Well, 
uh, we've moved on, haven't we? We've moved on. Three people are dead, and, and everything's moved on. Okay, let's have a let's have a fight. You want to fight for freedom? Okay. So so now you're fighting as well as the people you're fighting are fighting. So now we've got two lots of people fighting. We've moved on, have we? I, I'm sorry, I didn't notice. Hmm. This is not about fighting. Hmm. It is about taking our power back, and a, fun, a fantastically fundamental part of that is ceasing to cooperate with our own enslavement. Hmm. We do this. Politicians who we have no control over make laws, and we think that because it's the law, we have to obey it. Not if it's uh, uh, destroying human freedom and, and ba ba basic uh, rights to free expression uh, and, and what have you. No, no, no of course not. You, know, you, you can't say you must be law-abiding. I mean, it, it depends on the law. Okay, I'm going to change the law. I'm going to say that I can come and take your children away, which is what the state wants to do, is increasingly doing to more and more people for no good reason. Sure. That's part of the agenda. But I can change the law and say, okay, I, I can knock on your door and take your children away. I mean, are people going to obey that? Of course they're not. So, okay, there's a line we won't cross. It's just a question of where is that line? Mm. And that line must be any law which is not there to serve humanity, not to be beneficial to humanity, not to protect humanity, but to enslave them and take their freedoms away, that law must not be, must not be uh, uh, obeyed. Otherwise, we might as well just put our wrists out, Patrick, and let them put the chains on sure. now.